right, so I uh, had the whole setup for the joke of you're never gonna guess what, you know, still startup I'm working with, but y'all know. I work at Microsoft, uh, so uh, just, you know, these guys right here, just a ragtag crew of engineers. We're known for MS-DOS and BASIC. But uh, the thing that I actually wanna talk about today is how we make it easy to build authorization in MCP with the help of the C Sharp SDK. And surprising choice of a programming language, I know. Um, now, before I go any further, I wanna say that we do have a brand new authorization specification that's currently in draft for model context protocol. And that would not be possible without an absolutely massive and massive contribution of the MCP community. So, we worked very closely with a lot of our partners in Okta, like you heard uh, Aaron talk, Darren is here with AWS. We have a whole bunch of awesome folks. So let's give it up to the MCP community. One more time. <laughs> last, last I checked, I think it was the chattiest pull request we've seen in that repository, which is great. So um, the specification introduces something very, very cool, which is, as Aaron alluded to earlier in the morning talk, about the separation between the resource server and the authorization server, so that if you're a developer that builds an MCP server, you don't actually need to worry about implementing all the, the complexity of OAuth in the server itself. So uh, if they're split, that means that you can use something that's off the shelf ready. Uh, also, this means that now there's a universal discovery mechanism for the MCP server to go and declare that, hey, I'm using this particular authorization server from this identity provider. It can be anything. It could be Okta, AWS, Enter ID. It doesn't really matter. All of that was still following the modern authorization standards, OAuth 2.1, and the only thing that it adds is that one extra request. So the developer burden is not that high. It's just one extra request. So we're trying to make sure that we push this lower and lower and lower in the stack to make sure that developer burden is lower. Much lower. And the way this works is, so if we look at the new authorization spec, you have an MCP client, it can be Claude Desktop, it can be something that you roll yourself, and all it does, it requests data from the MCP server. And the MCP server comes back and says, no, you're, you, you're, not, you're not authorized yet. And it returns a 401 status, with a pointer to what's known as the protected resource metadata document. So it's gonna include it in the, in the header. So you can, the client is gonna parse that out and then get the, uh, the protected resource metadata document from the server and then start looking, okay, what can I do with that? That protected resource metadata document can be JSON, it can be a JOT, you can kind of read through the spec. But the idea here is that once you have that document, you can now, read it, understand what's the authorization server that needs to be used, and then kickstart the flow. And here, for brevity's sake, I just, you know, step four is complete flow, is the MCP client is gonna kickstart the authorization flow, go through the authorization server, do all the things, and then ultimately, the tokens will be returned to the client. So the client is now gonna have the tokens. And then, the MCP client can start requesting data from the MCP server again, and the MCP server can return data because now it's authorized. So we asked ourselves, okay, this is great, but we do not want to expect every single developer that wants to use MCP to go read the spec, read a bunch of RFCs, and start implementing their own thing from scratch. It's just it's way too much work. And so we established kind of a set of guidelines as we started exploring this topic. As for, first of all, it needs to be simple and intuitive. If you're a developer, that's some, somebody that wants to build MCP servers, you should just be able to plug and play. Uh, we just came from uh, Microsoft's own developer conference called Build, and one of the top things that developers say when they want to integrate with MCP is, I don't really care about implementing any of the security logic. Not because they don't want to, but mo mostly just because like, it's very complex. And not everybody is a security expert. Not everybody wants to be a security expert. And a lot of times the security is basically that bolt-on thing that is just like, look, man, I'm, I'm just trying to build an MCP server to focus on a specific task, and you're telling me that now I need to go and implement a whole bunch of OAuth complexity. It's just, it's, it doesn't work very well. At the same time, we wanted to make sure that whatever solution we come up with is idiomatic, and in this case, because of C Sharp, we wanted to make sure that it's friendly to C Sharp developers, and anybody that builds on top of C Sharp can actually just, just do it. 
Um, and like I said, plug and play with the ecosystem. If I want to use it to deploy to Azure or any other .NET based provider, I can do this. The last thing here is that we know that we want to design this around OAuth and what the spec does, but there's also a lot of stuff outside of that particular scope. And we want to make sure that as new authorization approaches can come in in the future, that we're not painting ourselves into a corner and saying that the SDK is designed in a certain way that nothing else can, uh, can be there. So that led us to create a work in progress uh, pull request for the, MC for the MCP C Sharp SDK that contains support for authorization, specifically new authorization spec. And in this case, the question comes down, what does the server code look like? If I'm selling you on it and telling you that it's so easy, how easy is it actually? So I'm gonna swap out. You will never guess the ID I'm gonna launch just now. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm gonna jump here to my protected MCP server code. So it's running in Visual Studio, it's the ASP.NET Core application, but uh, it, it gives an idea of just how easy it is to set up. So for most .NET developers, all you do is you essentially use the, the builder pattern. If you're a Java developer, you, this probably is familiar to you as well. All I'm doing is I'm setting up the server URL, I'm setting up the tenant, I'm using enter ID here, surprise, surprise, uh, but it works just as well with any other OAuth provider. Like this is not like, don't think of this as a Microsoft thing, this works literally for anybody. So I'm adding authentication to my application. Now I just say add authentication. And then I use the default challenge scheme with MCP auth defaults. And what this does is basically when a 401 is returned, I am getting the MCP response for the uh, protected resource metadata document. Then I add support for the job there, the JSON web token. And earlier in the morning session, Aaron talked about how you, you should validate tokens and you, your server should absolutely validate tokens that come in. And here I am setting this up. I'm making sure that I'm validating my tokens. Anything that comes into the server, I do the validate issuer, validate audience, uh, lifetime, all these things to make sure that whatever token I get, it's automatically parsed. And again, notice that I'm as a developer, as a developer I don't wanna be an expert in like, how do I parse a token? How do I actually like read through this? So just, just give, me the, give me the library. And because it's all Jots, just, just, just do this. And there's some like little bit of a custom kind of configuration for, for Entra, but again, this is generic enough that it works for anybody. And then I say add MCP. And what this means is that not only my server can now validate tokens, it can also actually host that protected resource metadata. Now, there is some heuristics behind the scenes that you can actually skip a lot of these values here, but I just want to post them here to be explicit. We have the resource definition, which is the server. We have the supported bare methods. In this case, it's just going to be a header. And then we add the supported scopes. In this case, I have just a, a separate API that I spun up myself. And that's kind of it. That's the config. That, that's all I need to do to, do the, to follow the new authorization spec with a C-sharp MCP SDK. Now there's a bunch of like helper stuff here, but it's mostly relevant to the actual functioning of the server. It's not, again, it's boilerplate ASP.NET configuration. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the server and we're gonna have it just running locally here on localhost. But the server is just one part of the puzzle because great, I can put the server, I can host it somewhere, but I need something to be able to talk to that server and actually get the data from it. Uh, in our case, uh, the server itself is, it's a dummy weather server. It doesn't do much beyond just kind of returning the, the, the weather information. Um, we also need the client. So the client itself is the one that's gonna go and do the kind of the, the exchange uh, and get us the, the, the information. So as you can see, the server is running here. I have my terminal. Let's go look at the client. So uh, the client implementation is also following the, the patterns in the MCP C Sharp SDK. I have my server URL. Uh, in this case, I'm using SSC, but it's gonna work just as well for Streamable HTTP because the implementation is generic enough. And all I really do here inside this client is setting up this basic OAuth provider. This thing is actually really cool because the OAuth provider itself is an implementation of a generic interface that we have that allows me to go in and then implement whatever authorization logic that I really want. So it, it implements 
uh, an interface that I'm going to like scroll here, IMCP credential provider. And what this is, is basically a f fundamental kind of abstraction of supported schemes. Give me the credentials and handle an authorized response. This is it. So this means that if you at some point decide to extend this to build an auth provider that uses a different library, a different um, third party IDP or identity provider, you can just do this. So in my case, I'm going to use protect NCP client. I have the server running. Let's try running the client as well. So let's give it a second to build. Anybody know any jokes? No? OK, we'll just wait for it to build that. Uh, and this, again, is going to be talking to the local MCP server that is running on localhost. Uh, it's going to connect. And then, if all goes well, it's going to bump me into the browser because it needs to authorize me. I'm already logged in with my Microsoft credentials, so it just blew past the authentication consent screen. I have the code. It got returned. And now, here, I have the context. It did get the token. So th this is me. It, it validated the token. It's all great. And it returned the authorization context because that's the tool that I invoked. It's called get authorization info. Uh, this is kind of cool. And then if we look at the server logs, we'll also notice that the server was doing token validation behind the scenes. And it did say the token was validated for me. So if I would have passed an invalid token, it wouldn't have worked. Now, the other thing that I should mention is that starting yesterday, Visual Studio Code actually supports the new authorization spec. So you can plug in any of the MCP servers. So I have the, the uh, one that I showed with localhost. Let's go ahead and add that. So I'm just going to do add MCP server. It's going to be HTTP. And then it's going to be localhost 7071. There we go. And I'm going to call it weather dan mcp and we're going to add it to user settings okay so now i have the server it's it's in my vs code configuration here and what i'm going to do here is notice that it prompted me to log in as it connected it realized that oh you're using enter id guess who else uses enter id for authentication vs code let me use the same credentials and by the way if you're logging in with github or any of the Microsoft accounts, it'll just work. It'll prompt you to say, hey, do you want to just reuse my client ID? Because in this case, it skips out the entire point of like the dynamic client registration. You don't do dynamic client registration at all because the client is already registered with Entra. So we're going to say allow. I'm going to use my account here. And we're good to go. Now here in agent mode, I have Claude Sonnet 4 enabled, again, recently announced. It's now supported. So I'm going to do whether then MCP and then Get me alerts for CA because we're in California. So fingers crossed this actually works. And we know that it identified my MCP server here. So it, it identified the tool correctly and the state we're passing is California. So we're going to say continue. And there we go. Current weather alerts. This came through and protected MCP server that is hosted Locally. And you can, again, throw this in a cloud. It works just as well with any other remote servers in VS Code. Uh, so long story longer for this. Uh, one of the things that we are really, really focused is developer ergonomics. We want to make sure that this is like super easy for somebody to just plug and play. If you're not a security expert, that's OK. If you do not want to deal with any of the configuration things, that's OK. You will just get it for free with the C Sharp SDK. And that's coming to other SDKs as well. So it's not just C Sharp. We're just demoing the things that we worked on. So uh, at that, if folks have any more questions, you can go to aka.ms slash mcp slash C Sharp to learn more about our SDK. Or you can send me a note directly. And I'd be happy to answer your questions. Thank you.